Hi, I'm Michelle, a developer advocate at Sunbird. Today, we're gonna walk through how to use the Sunbird Chat SDK's poll feature integrated with a Sunbird UI kit application. Polls allows users to share thoughts and interact with each other in a quick and easy way. By the end of this video, we'll have an application where a user can create a poll, add and delete poll options, as well as vote on and delete the poll. We'll start off with a basic UI kit setup. To get to this point, please refer to the UI kit setup video link below. Install the following dependencies we'll be using for our sample. This includes the Sunbird Chat SDK, Sunbird UI Kit for React, Material UIs, Material, and Icons Material. In the app file, initialize the Sunbird Chat SDK by calling .init and passing in the app ID and modules required for the app. Then call .connect and pass in the SV variable to customize app in order to use it for child components later on. Customized app starts with the channel list, channel, and channel settings from UI Kit. Add in use Sunbird state context and Sunbird selectors from UI Kit. We'll use use Sunbird state context to access the state of the Sunbird provider. You can use the use Sunbird state context component with selectors to implement a number of functionalities like sending a user message. For our sample, we'll be using it with the selector method get update user message to update the message. In the channel module, add the render message property. This renders a customized message item component, which in our sample, will go through each message that's in the conversation window and return a layout based on the type of message that it is. The messages in UI kit are a user, admin, and file message. In our sample, we'll add in a new type of message, a pull message. Lastly, channel will use render message input to return a custom message input. Create a component, customize message input. It'll start with the default UI kit design of the input field in a conversation window. Add into handle change a check to see if the text in the input bar starts with slash pull. If so, then it'll trigger a form to appear. Create the form and call it add pull. Add pull will have an input field to add the poll's title and options. When the form is submitted, it calls submit pull. Define submit pull and customize message input. This function sets the poll title and options entered in the form. The title and option text are required for creating a poll. An additional parameter we'll set is allow user suggestion. This allows other users to add options to this poll. Call poll.create and pass in the params. Once the poll is returned, set the user message params with its message as the poll's title and its poll ID. Call send user message and pass in the channel and params. This will send the message which contains the new poll information. Now, since the message contains poll data, the message is considered to be a poll, and it will render to the conversation window displayed as a poll message. Going back to customize app, channel uses render message to return customized message item. In customized message item, we'll check to see what type of message each message in the channel is. Use the default layouts provided by UI Kit for the admin message, file message, and user message. Here, we'll add a check to see if a message contains poll data, then return a custom poll message component. User message uses the preset design from UI Kit, which includes a drop down options menu for their message. The default options for this are an edit and delete button. Add in another option to create a poll. When the user clicks to see the dropdown, it'll call click dropdown. This will display the create a poll, edit and delete options. When a user clicks to create the poll, it'll call render question form. This function sets show form to true. Add a check in the return. When show form is true, render add poll. Again, when add poll form is submitted, it'll use the same submit poll function as previously mentioned and create the poll. Jumping into poll message, it starts off returning the default styling from user message UI kit provides. In the return, add in to display the poll title and an add option button. When the user clicks add option, it calls toggle options form, which sets show options form to true. This button will trigger an input text to appear to add the option into the poll. Next, have each option displayed within the poll. Show the option, its vote count, and a button to vote on it. The user who created the poll will have an options menu to change the poll, 
delete options or delete the poll. If the user who created the poll clicks delete option, it'll render the delete option form. This form will show each option and a checkbox for it. When the user submits the form, it'll call delete option. Define delete option in poll message. This function receives the options selected to delete and for each option, it will call the chat SDK's delete poll option function. This requires the poll ID and option ID to be passed in. If the user clicks the option change poll, it'll call render question form. This will display a custom component we'll create called update poll form. When a user submits the form, it calls update poll. To find this in poll message and set the params passed in from the form. Call update poll from the SDK and pass in the required polls ID and params to change. If a user clicks the delete poll option, it'll call the SDK's delete poll function, which takes in the poll ID. Lastly, when a user adds an option to the poll, it'll call handle options submit. Handle options submit uses the add poll option function, which requires the poll ID and the option submitted to be passed in. Going back to the options displayed, when a user clicks to vote on an option, it'll call handle vote. This will find the option that was clicked on and increment the vote count by one. Updated vote counts will hold the vote count and option ID. Next, create poll vote event payload and pass in the updated vote counts, timestamp, poll ID, and message ID. We'll create a new instance of a poll vote event from the chat SDK. This requires the poll ID, message ID, and the poll event payload to be passed in. With the instance of the poll event, pass it as a param to vote poll. Vote poll also requires the poll ID and poll option IDs. Then pass in this event that's returned to apply poll vote event. After applying the vote to the poll, define and call get option voters. This will keep track of the options the current user voted on. Loop through each of the options in the poll. For each option, use the create poll voter list query to receive the voters. Then go through the voters list and check if any of the voters are the current user. If it is, set my vote to hold options ID. This will set the state of the current user's vote within that poll so they can only submit one vote in each poll. And by knowing which option the current user voted for, we're able to add styling so the options vote button will be highlighted if it's voted on. Now we're able to save which option a user votes on, but we want to have this information on initial page load. Define get option voters inside of use effect. Now it'll perform the same actions where it gets a list of voters, checks if the current user is included in the list, and for any option they voted on, the vote button will be highlighted on the initial page load. At this point, we have the current user able to make changes to the poll. However, we need these changes to reflect in the UI so that other users can see this change as well. Create a new instance of the group channel handler from UIKit. Use add group channel handler and pass in the required unique handler ID, which is set to be the messages ID, and the group channel handler instance. Now that the group channel handler is connected, have it listened for on poll voted and on poll updated events. The on poll voted event listener is triggered when a poll is voted on. It uses apply poll vote event and passes in the event. Then use use channel state context from the UI kit to get the message dispatcher in. With the message dispatcher, set the type and the payload to reflect the change on the UI. Now, when other users vote on a poll, it'll listen for that action, apply the vote event, and update on the screen. The on poll updated event will listen for when a poll is changed, such as adding or deleting an option, or changing the poll's title. It uses apply poll update event from the chat SDK. It'll call message dispatcher to update the change in the UI. And there you have it. We successfully created a UI kit application with the Sendbird Chat SDK polls feature. From here, you'll understand how to implement polls in your own custom application. For more information on polls, check out the full GitHub repo and Sendbird documentation linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.